welcome to the 1916 Company. I am Arvin Johnston, and we are introducing a new series, The Collector's Roundtable. So to kick that off, I brought some familiar faces. Starting from our right, we have Tim, Rob, and Shagor. And guys, let's jump in. Let's talk about, let's talk about the UN Freak. There's a few on the table today. Rob, I think you have one on the wrist. I do. Let's start with that one. So we were fortunate enough to kind of get behind the scenes uh, in Dubai. So we all met as friends, and I, I guess we'll get into all the stories of that. But this one in particular is, uh, seems like it's built for me. You know, the, all the components of what goes into a Freak are pretty amazing. Um, but this one is kind of different. It's a little bit high horology, but it's a little bit, I don't know, special forces, which doesn't make any sense. You don't I, make any sense either. So right. A little OD green, a little forged carbon. So we actually got to talk to, uh, spent quite a bit of time with John Kristoff uh, in Dubai and basically explained, why did you make this? Which is pretty cool. So the first question I had, you know, rather than the movement, rather than any of this, that there's detailing on the side that looks like map contours. And when I was in the SEAL teams, I was a point man. I, I took a lot of pride in like how I navigated. And I thought this was really cool. And my first question was, if this is map contours, is this a place? Is this actually a real place? And he goes into it and he's like, no, it's not a real place. Went into like how they built it. We originally did it in a red color. Um, and we thought it looked really neat. And all of the elements that go into this watch and make it a freak, uh, you know, it's, the movement is really unique. You see it, you know, kind of before you. There is not a dial on this watch. You just look into the movement. You don't realize it's you know, kind of an open work thing. So it's high horology for maybe someone, a knucklehead like me who likes, you know, beater watches, but it's high horology for like special ops. I don't know how many people fall into that, but like, it's perfect. We got one at the table, that's it's, it's all that counts. It's Velcro, like this shouldn't work, but it's amazing. Now, what is the case actually made out of? So it's made of uh, carbon, it's a mixture, I think, of, of uh, like a carbon, carbon fiber. Composite, yeah, carbon. Like a, yep. like a yeah. carbon fiber. Mm -hmm. carbon so fiber. like ceramic is like, I think, mixed into it. It's some proprietary thing, and then everything is t titanium. So it's super lightweight. It's still a freak, but it, it kind of almost feels like a G-Shock on my, my wrist. Due and, to the weight, I could definitely see that. And it's Velcro. Like it's bananas, and you know, as I'm you know collecting watches, I have you know basic diver watches. I have you know kind of like the stereotypical things. Said I want to I want to see something a little bit more high horology, but something that kind of fits me. And the freak absolutely does all of those things, and I feel like this one was made for me. And then when I was talking to John Kristoff, we were in Dubai. They had this weird, ridiculous room that is the movement of a freak. And he's talking us on how everything works. I think we have a photo of that. Yeah, the mirror actually. is above yeah. you, so yeah. you look yep. up to yep. see it. It was sick. Yep. It was awesome. So we're doing that, and you know, he found out about my background that I was in the SEAL teams. And Ulysses Nardan is like formerly, you know, a, a watch for you know people of the sea. Like it was used to be like chronometers on ships to actually keep time. You know, a long time ago, and the, the history of it is that. And he brought up. He's like, do you know we donate watches to One More Wave, and it's a, a SEAL organization that does like. Uh, kind of like PTS kind of things. It's a charity that they've given watches to and their connection to that is all really, really neat to learn about. And he knows this stuff off the top of his head as I'm just sitting there. Uh, I mean, it was just charming. You see the passion of everybody there. And uh, I mean, this is for me. They, they have a One More Wave limited edition that's really cool. A good uh, good friend and client of mine actually got one of those for me somewhat recently. And it's a, it's a cool promotion. It's a really cool watch in general too. But that, that connection is awesome. You know, you you mentioned the open work nature of the dial, and I think I've said before I'm not the biggest open work skeleton guy. It doesn't always do it for me, but this is kind of a this is kind of a quiet skeletonization. You wouldn't necessarily know that it is technically open work just by looking at it. I think sorry, go it's ahead. what no, it's what the watch is. Like the freak revolutionized what an open work could be. Like the, the you know the movement is kind of the dial. The dial is the movement. Technically, it's an hour tourbillon, but it is something that's crazy. Like when it came out, it was like nothing else. And I, I just think it's one of those classic things that's underrated. I think we all fell in love with UN. It didn't hurt to uh, go to Dubai and hang out with the team. And shout out to Matthew. He was amazing. Uh, Matthew Haverland, new managing director. Uh, but it was awesome. That's the one that This is the one I you've love. been yeah, spending time I, with. I, I now, what is the name of this piece? So this is the Freak One. That's okay. the Freak One. And that is, I would say, in the middle of the, the lineup. It's, it's kind of in the, the, the solid middle. 
Uh, but that is obviously gold on the bezel, uh, awesome rubber strap, the pliant clasp. Unbelievably wearable, but this is more the classic with the it's no crown. It's remarkably yeah, wearable. Yeah, so it's more like the original. There's no crown on it, if I steal from right here. It takes a little bit of torque to get it wound on the bottom, but you set it by just popping the little button that says Freak, which is very cool, and then you actually set the time like this, which is just awesome. And then the movement, obviously, you're gonna stare at it the whole time. It's gold, the hands are, you know. The starkness the between the black and gold is yeah. awesome. He, he's got the blue one over there, which is, I think, the more, I'm not gonna say sleeper, but everyday one. Yeah, it's more of the understated version, I would think. I, I, I like the I like the fact that it's titanium, the blue just like works for me much better. And like being able to see the balance wheel just uh, rotating like that, like it, being able to see the heart of the watch is just like re something like really, really cool. It's almost hypnotic looking at the balance yeah. wheel. Like it's going back and forth. Like balance wheels are generally hidden. Uh, most people don't flip their watches over, but Yulis Nardon took the prettiest part of a watch and put it on the front. I think that's pretty awesome. Every time that I look at the time, I don't look at the time, yeah. I forget it. Oh, I always look. And yeah, then, and it takes and a little it, while. And it surprises me. Every every single time I see the balance wheel, like, I'm surprised at it, and then I forget that I was looking at it. I have the occasional yeah. problem of coming off as rude because I do, I kind of look at my watch a lot yeah. as a watch lover, and especially with my wife, for example, it's like, I'm, I'm not I'm not timing anything, I'm just checking Sometimes it out. Sometimes it just looks like you're doing the arrogant flex. <laughs> exactly, like, yeah. it's just like, oh yeah. Please. I think UN is just one of those brands that obviously is just underrated and undervalued. So I, think you, it's a, I think it's a sleeper brand. You mentioned it, and to me, me, a freak doesn't have a crown. No. So this is such a freak to me. Yeah. I love this version. And honestly, I'll be I'm pleasantly surprised as to how much I like those. I, those I, are I certainly do. easier to use yes. on a daily basis. Yes. I do like the updated version of the, the movement, or like, I mean, this is a, it's a much different movement than that, obviously, but I, I like the sleekness of having the, the crown and being able to set it very quickly and just kind of more of what you're used to. But I, I think it's I, I think it's a great fun watch. It's like I do like a crown on a watch yeah. too. It's yeah. an operating thing. It's it's so it's so it, necessary. And you you wouldn't necessarily think a, a crownless system would work quite as well as this one does. And despite the fact that yeah, you do have to put a little bit of effort yeah. into it, the setting is easy. The winding is relatively easy. I'm. Uh, yeah, the the freak without it, the freak Sansa crown is the freak. It's crazy how daily wearable these are. Like a lot of people see them, they're like, oh, that's a special occasion watch. And it absolutely can be that, but you've been wearing yours nonstop since you got it. You know, it, this, I, I think this one's a little bit different. You know, the without a crown, all of those things. This is just super wearable. Um, the lightness of it, how it feels, and this is just for me. So high horology on kind of a knuckle dragger. I don't know why they did this, but <laughs> they did it for me. It's a very cool right. watch, dude. So going um, going on the kind of the opposite end, a little bit on the more entry level, less expensive side. Let's talk. Uh, let's talk Chris Roy. We have a few. We have a few here. Uh, the twelve. We have a Bel Canto and yep. we have, the Aventurine. Yep. Yeah, the Aventurine Moonface. This the this piece, the twelve. This thing blows my mind. Actually, I am. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll say something that's going to come across a certain way. I haven't purchased a $1,200 watch in a very long time. And I don't really plan on doing so anytime soon. This is outrageously You're fun. Make it a mistake. This is a mistake. outrageously fun. Yeah, yeah. This is putting this on the wrist, seeing the dial, you know, you get what you get with the movement. It's a great movement. It's a daily wear movement. You'll be able to you'll be able to keep time. You'll be able to enjoy it. It's you'll be able certified. to look at it. Yeah. Is, it is it actually it a COC? Is. That's amazing. That, that one. Is. People are screaming at their screens right now after you said this is like something I wouldn't buy. It's insanely good. It's really nice. I'm not saying I wouldn't buy it. I haven't. So, you know, part of the story of how we met yeah. and all all of that, we'll get into kind of as more Moser, but we're in a horology group, so. I don't even, it starts with you. It starts with, I took a trip to London. I met a guy named Jazz, we'll just leave it at Jazz, who has this crazy horology group with crazy heavy hitter watch and car enthusiasts in Europe. And uh, we've all joined this WhatsApp group and they were on a like CW Kool-Aid that I thought was crazy until yeah. we actually saw CWs. And they have some limited edition ones we're getting that are very, very cool. But once we actually got them on the wrist, it changed everything. Like I, I thought it was internet hype, and then I realized they are absolutely making watches ridiculously above the pay grade. So I'll say this about this watch in particular. I expected a PRX feel to the bracelet. Mm -hmm. It does not have a nope. PRX feel. This mm -hmm. has this has a, oh man, somebody's gonna crucify me. This has a 90s AP feel yeah, to the bracelet. Yeah, 90s AP, Chopec Antarctique. Yeah, I mean, yep. it's got a, 
It, that bracelet is insane for that watch. It, the, the dial, the matching date wheel, the small details that they touch on with this piece is hits above its price point without a doubt. So to me, I mean, this is, I mean, they they are very explicit, and you know, they're it's a, an homage to Gerald Genta, the Royal Oak, to the Nautilus. I mean, to all of those kind of things. I mean, I think the Royal Oak more than any other thing. They're being honest about that, though. They, they are. They're they're very upfront. They tell you where the movements from. This is uh, a Salita uh, three hundred. They they tell you exactly the movement. They're not hiding anything, it's all up front for you to do. And for the, the price point, and you don't, you know, instead of waiting in line for an AP and having to pay fealty for a brand that is very difficult to get, you can get, you know, 80% of that experience. And for me, uh, I, you know, I think Seiko's are the watch that you get right away, the first yeah, nice yeah. watch that you get. And I've always like, hey, I'm into mechanical watches, where should I start? Seiko is like, generally, low -hanging fruit. generally speaking, the correct answer. And right now, I think Christopher Ward is the correct answer, particularly if you wanted the integrated uh, bracelet, you know, the the Gerald Genta, if, if you have to start here. I, I think, it, you know, this one is a little bit more in titanium. They have, uh, uh, this is like more like $1,800, I wanna say, close to $2,000. And then the the other ones though, you, there are versions you get for about a thousand bucks with different movements. To me, this one, the dial, the bracelet, it's it's so good. And, and I've, I've worn it. is awesome. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah, I love like the I love the look of the dial and the, like the, the the smokiness of it and just the the way that it looks and the feel of this watch is just it, it like you said it, it hits above its price point for it, for sure. The crazy thing with CW is we have three of them on the table and all three are on a different bracelet. All have a bracelet. All three have completely different dials. Do completely, completely different movements. Different and that's dials. his Aventurine, the Moon Phase, which is yeah. just insane. Admittedly, the 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 Aventurine's amazing. Admittedly, the Moon Phase is a little too much for me on this, but it's amazing. Yeah, but here's the thing. People are going to like that. Absolutely. Somebody's going to see that and talk about it. That's this, a conversation. There is there is a peg for this hole, without yeah. a doubt. And then, obviously, I have the Bel Canto, and I don't know where you're going to get a chiming watch for basically sub $5,000. Think of how much you could get from other brands. You, you couldn't even get into a lot of other brands for $5,000. No. And here you're getting a chiming, beautiful dialed, skeletonized, Titanium bracelet watch. I just don't know where you're getting yeah, for that, that price point. I don't know what like w at that price point, like that type of horology. I don't know how they're making money. They yeah. must be like losing money every time they sell one of these. It's the baby MBNF. It is. It is. And, it, is. and I'm not knocking MBNF. Obviously, I love MBNF, but they're punching above their weight again. Like they should be, you know, uh, they're not getting the respect they deserve. They're kind of blowing up on the internet. It's getting a little bit of chatter. Why are they blowing up on the internet? Because they make amazing watches that look spectacular. Think, what a shock, yeah. right? I like, think brands crazy. need to understand that you need to punch above your weight class. And I think brands need to start doing that more often rather than having one line that they lean on fiercely for doing so. I think brands also have to realize that the people that buy their watches, the people that actually get them collectors, and just even, you know, if you have one or two watches, there's a community that comes with these. Like Christopher Ward is developing a community that other brands just don't have. Well, think about it this way. If you hadn't had the experience that you did, we wouldn't have three no, Christopher Wards No, we wouldn't Wards have Christopher Wards here. We wouldn't have bought yeah. them. Like, obviously we influence each other. This chat group that we're in, hurts everything. It's like a gambling anonymous group that meets at a casino only. Uh, it's just horrible. All we do is like push watches on each other. But clearly we have each selected a couple of brands that we've all bought and we all love. And you know, Christopher Ward is the latest. So uh, that, started with Moser. So to that point, yeah, let's talk yeah. Moser because that's how, oh, that's where Moser, you guys boys. really- How yeah. you guys get into Moser? Let's hear it. <laughs> that's where you really guys all met too, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. Literally we all met basically because of Moser. So, and and uh, 1916 and, and sitting down with uh, Tim Masso. So, yeah. you know, we've watched these things and it was, uh, I would watch all the collector conversations, all the watch reviews, and I actually watched your collector conversation and I happened to be in the store right after I heard it, and I was gonna record when I hadn't recorded mine yet, and I heard his voice from the other room. Well, it's not uh, distinctive at all. What the hell? Uh, yeah. I'm a shrinking violin. <laughs> right. uh, it's over the top, it's, uh, you know, shrill in my ears, but, uh, <laughs> but you know, I, I, was, I was shopping for something. I was trying to, you know, move up in brand. I was looking at, you know, a higher horology thing, and I was actually I was making, making a purchase at the time. Yeah. The, uh, and I heard his voice and I said, I saw your collector conversation. Like I, I went up and introduced myself. That's not what you said. You said, I recognize your voice. I and, recognize I, and I'm basically like, that's the creepiest thing anybody's ever said to me. <laughs> but yeah, and it, it was awesome, dude. It was, it was very cool. And then things got weird. They got weird. I asked him, I was like, do you like to get weird? He was like, we get weird. And uh, I had already met you because you were buying that watch that's on your wrist or you <laughs> were looking at it. You, you didn't know which one you were gonna buy. Yeah, I was looking at it. I mean, Moser, I, I have been, I was enamored by the brand for, for years before that, uh, just the philosophy of, 
you know, the brand and how, how much they're just, they just don't take, you know, I, I feel like they don't take it anything really seriously. Like, you know, none of this is serious. You know, we're, we're, we're into it because it's uh, like, there, there's things that are just, uh, they're just fun, right? And I was look, I was looking at the streamliner and lo and behold, like, Tim kind of just walks by as I'm I, as I'm looking at this thing, and out, out of nowhere, just says, "You need to buy that watch. That <laughs> that is one of the that's the, one of the perfect watches that you could possibly get." You were wearing a longa one. You were looking at another longa. I was like, "Go Moser," and I knew you knew Moser. You were rattling off more facts about Moser than I knew, and it was I was like, "Dude, that's that's you." Also, it's it's so ridiculous for a perpetual count. You know that that yeah. piece in particular, not to uh, not to timestamp this episode too much, but the the salmon perpetual recently came out, and mm -hmm. I like yours much more it's easier to I think it's easier to use on a daily basis I think it's easier to wear yeah, no, I, oh, I agree. Salmon Perpetual, you mean the one that Rob has right here? <laughs> Not Perpetual. This humble little one Salmon Dragon. Yeah. 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 yeah, it's like these two just had a baby. Yeah. 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 So, <laughs> I, I think this one looks like the Eye of Sauron, the, uh, it's supposedly salmon, but it's the most not it's salmon gold. thing ever, right? Chestnut, I don't know what it is, but when you're in the light, it looks like the Eye of Sauron looking at you, which is pretty so cool. The so I was playing with it a second ago, and it's like, at one angle, it's yeah. bronze gold. The first day we ever hung out outside of Watchbox and, you know, hanging out with watches, I told each of them, I said, I have something weird, if you guys want to do something weird, and they said, what's weird? It was Mother's Day, both these guys are dads, and uh, I said, we have a ridiculous prom limo, and we're taking it down to Atlantic City, we're going to go to this really cool restaurant, Chef Ola's. I got a cool group, and oh, by the way, Edward Malon's coming with us. And I don't think you guys believed me, and I was like, you can't miss this opportunity. And then uh, that night was like ridiculous fun, and uh, but it was a watch geek stream. So you invited yeah. me there. I didn't own any Mosers at the time. I had seen them, I, I was familiar with them, and I didn't know either one of you at the time. We go into a stretch limo <laughs> to have rest. It just didn't make any sense. I, was, I talked to my wife, I'm like, this is gonna be really weird. This seems like too good of an opportunity to pass up. I don't necessarily, you know, at the time, I, I was probably prejudiced against watch collectors, being like, that's, I'm not like that at all. Sure. And, uh, and <laughs> sure uh, you're not, buddy. you know, people who, you know, like watches, you know, we, we hit it off right away. And you end up in a place where, like, why am I here? And I think that you had the same feeling. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I had the same conversation with my wife. I'm, I'm, I'm going, I'm going to meet, <laughs> I'm going to hang out with this guy that I, that I just met at a watch shop, and we're, we're, we're going to get in a limo and we're going to, we're, we're going to go hang out with a potentially a, a watch CEO, and you know, the CEO of one of the brands that I've been in love with for like the last, you know, like five or six years, and. Literally, I think the first like 30 seconds of meeting Rob, you know, that and we, we get in this limo and, you know, I, I noticed you were wearing like a Speedmaster uh, 321 and I asked him like, uh, can, you know, that, that's a really nice watch. Like, uh, is that the Ed White? And, you know, without even thinking, he just like popped it off his wrist and like handed it to me. And he's like, is that weird? And I was like, no, absolutely not. I mean, like for a watch collector, like that's, that's the way. The, yeah, yeah. yeah. that's the, the way. You gotta understand this limo isn't a regular limo. Like it seated 30 people. It had an electric fireplace in it and we had eight of us. Like it was <laughs> empty inside the limo. It was ridiculous. So you were huddled up by the fire Oh yeah, dude, warmth. so we, we had a great dinner. We ended up hitting up a spots after it. We, it was a it was a long, fun night. The Melons are a blast. They're the greatest, they're, yeah. dude. Moser's like cool. I know everybody says it, it's cool. Uh, obviously, I have. They I, I brought a nice Moser today. They should change their name from very rare to very cool. Very cool, yeah, very cool, exactly. Because they do like things like the meteorite or the asteroid. Yeah, the me. asteroid uh, with the meteorite dial. You got it. Are outrageously cool. The it, way I designed this watch was ridiculous. Like it was so care carefree, easy. Like the whole company's amazing. Obviously, this is probably my most special. And piece. that's Moser in a nutshell. That is like, Moser. They're they're cool, dude. And once you get one, you just want to get more. They're they're known for their dials, but they actually make amazing movements. They just did a platinum micro rotor on their new uh, streamliner that's 39, 39 millimeters, millimeters dropped yep. They always have cool stuff coming out. The dial on that's amazing. The the sub seconds actually I was against when it came out. It looks really cool. So, yeah, but it's like an enamel dial, dial, right? Another yeah. thing, when they opened Moserland in New York, the three of us went, we went up to New York and we just had a ridiculous time. Like we met Andrew up there, we met other people up there, but Edward, Bertrand, Claudio, they were there and um, we took like ridiculous goofy pictures and had a blast, but it's just cool to talk watches. And generally, Moser people are very passionate about Mosers, but they have lots of other brands. You know? And they're interested in the community above all. And like that's that's really what we're talking what we're talking about in general is the watch collecting community. And I mean, 
There are a lot of people that collect on an island and you know don't necessarily share, and I understand that aspect of collecting, especially in this hobby, um, due to the dollar amounts that can be associated. But it's so much more fun when you can commiserate, really, yeah. and, and when you can. I mean, there's there's also three Cartiers on the table. I for think example. that's so. Watches yep. bring people together, and if they don't, I would encourage people to let watches bring you. Yeah, together. like you should share it more. Online is great, YouTube is great, but get out there. Invite people. Go to meetups. Hang it's out. Crazy. And you don't Come to the 1960s. Limo, you can go wherever. I mean, Cartier is another one of those brands that I think we all love. But I think you and I really loved it before we even met. Like mm -hmm. I had Cartier, you had Cartier. Uh, I just got a brand new car well, new Cartier from you. I, I told you, I was like, get me something ridiculous. It's the Cartier, Cartier brick. This is me, dude. Like this is so I love it. It's a brick. It's ridiculous. The you know, the Calib de Cartier, it's awesome. But it's got that retro look. It looks like a, a watch of yesteryear. Uh, it's made of like 47 pounds of rose gold, it which actually is very is. cool. It's weighty. But no, I, I just love Cartier. I think it is an undervalued brand, even though it's just, I think it's the second biggest selling watch brand. So it just doesn't get the horological respect that I think it deserves. And look at our Cartier. I totally all, agree. They're they're everything different. is different. Look at how different they yeah. are. Like none of these are remotely the same. There's something that's interesting about the people that like Cartier, and I feel like the low-hanging fruit is always the design. The, yeah. the design language of Cartier is timeless. That is from the 2020s, and it could have been made in the 70s. This is a big gold Cartier. I get an 80s vibe from this. I like see very, it. Very Wall Street. I see it not, too. You know, very yeah. Wall Street-y, not Wolf of Wall Street, like, you know, the original. But I also get classic timeless. Like, if you just look at the dial, that silver... Roman yep. numeral on the top, the center seconds, the triple date. I, I just, I love this watch. And that's the beauty, I, it's I so Cartier. Watch. Like yes. everything, even though that's a round watch, even though there's uh, an exaggerated date window, an exaggerated 12 o'clock, that is so Cartier and it's unapologetic. We, well, the three of us collect watches. They are basically the same person when they collect. I couldn't be more different. They take their time, they scrutinize, they go over details. They're ridiculously analytical, and I'm analytical too, but sometimes, usually, I just go. I just pull the trigger. I like just I, noticed this has a, a mixed uh, mixed numeral dial. Yeah, too. yeah it's, just, it's, it's crazy, it's, right? It's, yeah. it's awesome. Like, that's so cool. Half top Roman, six, bottom six. It's, it's almost it's, a California yeah. dial. It basically has markers on the bottom and yep. Roman numerals on the top. That's it's very, crazy. very cool. Yeah, and then also Tim Masso loved this watch. It was very cool. <laughs> he geeked the out on it, too. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he, you know, it's first off, it's a Cartier influence. movement. It's, you know, it's not an Etta. Uh, it is uh, a ridiculous watch in the sense that you won't find these anywhere. I think Tim told me the 5811 is a lot more common than this, so it made me feel good about my my cool new rare watch. But uh, <laughs> they're out there, man. Like Cartier on the secondary market is easily available, and obviously you can get them at any boutique or primary store. I just think it's something classic, and it says you uh, you care about horology. And you know, there is something to be said about a full precious metal bracelet, too. I, I like the half. I, I like straps, which is crazy. I've been getting straps, but I traditionally am a full... Metal bracelet lately, for whatever reason, it's precious metal. I've, yeah. I've gone down the gold rabbit hole. There's something about the heft, the dense, the density that just feels, it's not heavy on the wrist, it's just dense on the wrist. It's just more significant. You pay more attention to the watch that you wear. And uh, for the 5811, exa for example, you've had this watch now for four months. Four months. Four months. And you wear it it's almost daily. Wear daily. It. No, daily. Daily. And I went jumping off a yacht in Dubai. I, I, love I know that sounds that. like the, the, I the love worst. It you know, highfalutin thing to say, but like I said, when I bought this, I looked at you and I was like, I'm gonna beat the hell out of this And watch. let me tell you something. And everybody else it thought looks, I was kidding. I'm gonna beat the crap out of this It looks watch. better today I'm than the day that I sold it. I'm gonna test the limits of this watch. Like, the I fact not, that this has wear on it, yeah, uh, I, I it am, makes me feel good. This is not going in a sock drawer. This isn't going in a safe. I'm wearing this watch. Now, I can go on why I love it, you know, but this is a watch that's classic and I am gonna wear it. I'm yeah. gonna wear it, but generally, nobody knows what this is. Most people don't care about watches. It's a hobby that's very niche. A percent of a percent. Let alone people that know what this is. So. I just love wearing it, and a lot of people get scared. I, I rock it out. That's that's what I like lo love about that watch, or like the like your philosophy as well too. Wear your watches. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Because that like if you're not going to wear them, like what's the point? Yeah. So when you took a dive into the Persian Gulf <laughs> in this, I was with you, and so you did a flip. So we had this on video. Yeah, <laughs> you did a flip with this. We took a video of it before you went in. It was a very surreal moment because going to Dubai, you know, I hadn't. Like to get there, I had to fly over uh, Iraqi airspace, which the last time I was in Iraq uh, was a long time ago under very different circumstances. Going into the Persian Gulf on like a vacation, basically, and meeting watch people. And we got to meet the most amazing people that are in the watch world. So on that boat, we had 
I mean, we, Edward was there again. Edward. We had some Moser. Uh, Matthew came from UN. Uh, Andrew was there. We and had so, a Scottish Watch right. podcast. Uh, and then just watch people again. But you shouted out right when I hit the water, right. did you screw the crown down? Right. And like, <laughs> like, out of a movie, I go, shit. I look at him like, oh, it's down. I mean, it was, it was a joke, but like. Yeah, I twisted it like nice and tight. So we were with Andrew Morgan. So Andrew Morgan, so as getting into watches and watching people, um, Tim Masso was, you know, one of my favorite people and I was able to kind of meet and kind of go through that. And Andrew Morgan is another uh, person who I've just completely respected and we get to spend all, a bunch of time with him and now we're friends. And uh, kind of, I mean, it was, your story is crazy of where that goes, but. Uh, it was surreal. I remember we, you had just bought a watch and you were smoking cigar. We were smoking cigars. We try and celebrate after we get watches. And uh, I was like, you know, let me let me call Andrew up on video chat. And then that was the beginning of a, another crazy friendship. I think it's also great that the three of us have all done collective videos with Tim. We yep. all work with you. Yep. Uh, it, there's, there's a community, man. There, there's something that happens with watches that you want to share it with your friends. You want to. And again, it can be something like this, which Rob owes, right. that is not exactly a high price right. point, or it can be... I was just going to pull out the brew, actually. Know, so, yeah. Something like that. I mean, th these watches we geek out for maybe more than some of the other ones on the table. I mean, they're silly. They they're are. Fun. Yeah. yeah. And you know, the silly is actually a really good word for it. Watches are are really silly. This one's fun. extra silly. That is extra silly. This I'm is, pushing silly th to like the greatest part. This one feels a little bit like the Big Lebowski to me and uh, <laughs> the dude abides. Dude abides. Time's just like a social construct, man. <laughs> the brew is so cool. This has a, a, a mecha quartz movement. It's got fun colors. Uh, Shigori, you were just saying, explain the, uh, the coffee timing on it. Yeah, so that that brew um, is basically made for uh, for coffee lovers as well too. Because basically the the timer on here is if you're if if you're into uh, espresso, like this is like the the timer uh, at the at the bottom at the yellow is actually for perfect time for pulling an espresso shot essentially. So if you're into coffee, like this is a perfect watch for you as well too. And you got into latte art over the pandemic a little bit, is it right? <laughs> yeah. I, I, I've seen some of your work and I really do like it. It's it's it's, it's a blast. Yeah. It's good. It's good stuff. I, the the latte art, the the combination with that watch, the fact that you're into coffee, like I that that whole stack is fun to me. <laughs> yeah, even even uh even our watch group program, we have a whole uh, little subgroup of coffee lovers as well too, where we, where, where we share coffee art. No coffee serial killers. Like you guys take that <laughs> more seriously than anybody. Like to the degree of temperature, there's one of them right there. Like oh, yeah. you, you make your coffee and it has to be perfect. If you don't know the gram to water ratio, like the water to coffee ratio in grams, and then you don't weigh every single time that you before you make it. So so, the absolute temperature of it, I prefer 200, 205 is too so hot. So another weird thing, Luke Way, yeah, right, Luke right. another weird style, thing watches know? transition to is we work out together now. And we work out very early in the morning and we always start with I'm he dying does a to double do espresso every day. Yeah, we do stairs, you gotta come by. We put a weight vest on and we just walk up and down my building doing flights of stairs. It's, it's, it's a really cool thing. But again, watches was the catalyst that brought yeah. all of this together. Like none of this happens without it. And of course we go to dinners, we do all kinds of stuff, but the watches are the thing that binds, binds it together. Uh, maybe with you, coffee might be really close. <laughs> I just tried a new coffee place today too. It's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I make espresso at home, so this this watch is perfect for that as well too. And I just love the the design and like the '70s feel of this. It's kind of like a very '70s, very yeah, retro. Yeah, and it's it's just like a a, a re, like a, a smaller version of uh, my streamliner. As I well feel like too. there's something Laurent Ferrier about that. Like I, there, it, it reminds me of it a little bit. I don't know. I could see some colors there. So yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. It's crazy. Oh, yeah, yeah, exactly. The higher we climb the crazy horological ladder, sometimes you find these watches are the ones that excite you more. And I wish I knew more about these entry-level watches when I was getting into watches. It was the same typical brands you hear, but yep. these watches are the ones that you may have more fun with, especially like the Christopher Wards. You can, you know, lend them to a friend, go back and mm -hmm. forth, but I'm not going to say that you don't care as much about them, but obviously it's a lot easier to, to get into a price point and a watch that's clearly fun, clearly high made, and you can share it. And with it's friends. just you—you you have options now. Like Rob, what you were saying about you know you, you're the first brand that you buy is Seiko nine times out of ten. Absolutely. Now you have you do have options. You know your entry level, your true entry level, your probably best bet is Seiko. But at slightly above, look at what you can get. Yeah, it's, inc I, it's insane. Yeah, this is a four hundred dollar watch. That's a quartz movement. And it's like, a mechanical quartz Seiko, movement. Yeah, the Mecca quartz. It has a it has a great sweep. Speaking of the uh, '70s vibes, this is super cool. Sugar. This is this is a watch that I, 
It's, it's the amazing. mat looks perfect on you, actually. Yeah. That, that's My God, awesome. it matches your yeah. ring. That's, that's why I wore the Cartier ring today, ring but perfect. honestly, this is better. You know, it literally matches. It's it's perfect. So that is a reissue of a, a Hamilton from the 1970s, and I believe it was like 1971 where that one came out, Hamilton PSR. That was actually in a, uh, a Bond movie as well, too. I think uh, it's You a, mentioned Live and Let Die? Yeah, Live Roger, and Let Roger Die. Moore. Roger Moore, yeah. One it's, of the greatest Bond songs, too. Yeah, and I think that came out in 2020, and it, it's it, so good. I, I saw it, and I was like, this, this thing's digital, and it's just so weird. And I love Bond, anyways, and this, I, I just kind of had to get that one, and it's just something that's kind of out there, and I, I love. That only tells the time. There's nothing else. To yeah, that. I, that's that's, that's even better. That's yeah. even better. I'm glad that there's yeah. no date. I'm glad that there's no chrono. I'm glad that it's digital. Like this is. This watch is not embarrassed to be itself, gold tone and all. It's the original yeah. digital, like basically. Yeah. yeah. Original digital, see what I did there? <laughs> <laughs> so the last quartz watch on the table is the Mr. Jones. The, and this is, time is a social construct. That's it. It's all topsy-turvy, it doesn't make any sense. Uh, hard to read the time again. It's two strawberries, they just came out with a blueberry one. Yep. This is the same thing. To me, when I saw it, I immediately thought of The Big Lebowski, which is my favorite movie. And uh, the whole thing is silly. Uh, I don't know why, it's a little bit small for me, so that this is very much not my style, but it makes me smile so much. I think it's so ridiculous that I had to have it. And uh, the Mr. Jones watches are actually hard to yeah, come by. They yeah. sell out really quickly. But you know, this is a cheap watch, but every time I put it on, it just, I mean, it makes me smile. You know, obviously it's not, uh, it's not the same thing as other stuff on the table, but it's still really fun. I, it means something to you, and that's, absolutely again, does. that's what matters most. Absolutely. I mean, that, that is the point of a, a collection in general. Yeah, if you look at your wrist and it makes you smile, that's all that really matters, no matter what the price point is. I mean, like, the, the version of the Mr. Jones that I like is, like, it's, a, it's like the two hands, like, remember, you will die. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> with, mirror, die. with a mirror face. Like, like, you look, look Memento it. Mori, yeah, yeah it's, it's a great piece. Yeah, but their sense yeah. of humor is ridiculous. Yeah. That, yeah. That's what you like. I don't know, that's a little Moser-esque, obviously, yeah. a different yep. price point, but sometimes you, know, you I just want, gotta have fun, man. Have fun with the I watches. want a funny new Moser. I, I, I want a... I want a Swiss cheese watch or something of the like. Like, I really want that again. We all got to put on the, the Frankenstein, the, 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 what's the exact model? The icon, the icon, icon, the Swiss yeah. icon, icon, which yeah. is like ridiculous. The Swiss the icon is see. amazing. I, I remember that coming out, like, and, and just thinking about it, and probably at first having the wrong opinion of it, and then understanding what it was and really appreciating. Well, you get to geek out. You get to pick every brand yep. that's associated with it. I'm not gonna start naming brands, but it's one of those watches that's fun. Uh, I think that fun watches are great. Now, I'm not gonna say every watch needs to be fun. Like, Cartier is pretty classic. I, yeah. don't, I don't think people associate them as much with fun, but sometimes you just, different vibe, different mood, you're gonna wear a different watch. That's the way it goes. Moser's so awesome, it has been so awesome to us. And you you brought me in and basically you're a, a maniac and you said your next watch basically needs to be a Moser to every person you ever meet. <laughs> yeah. And so, <laughs> I don't know what the uh, so I got into it and uh, they are so awesome and so fun and we've gone to events and they keep inviting us to stuff and it's, it's so welcoming and so inviting. They get to try on, you know, all of these watches that are Kind of make believe. The, the only one you can't try on is the one actually made of cheese. Yeah, uh, they're just like, well, you can't actually try that on. But everything else, they, they are so awesome to us and so inviting, and it's you know kind of the impetus of our friendship. It's the truth. Without Moser, I don't think we're we're here. You know, I think uh, Moser is um, significant in a different way too. While the Streamliner, I would say, currently is their most popular model, the Pioneer is significantly absolutely is very popular. The Mega Cool, the Mega Cool. Awesome. I think the Mega Cool might be their most iconic watch. I think a lot of people that know Moser associate the Mega Cool. That's my wife's, obviously Kate. Uh, big shout out, Kate. You, uh, she has the Mega Cool, which is ridiculous because it's forty three millimeters. Yep. But it's one of those watches that's just very summertime, very cool vibes, very very happy. It Moser looks, watches are happy, man. It looks yeah. like an alien's eye. It does. It's awesome. Awesome. You have a mega cool. I have, you have a, mega, a mega. I have a mega. That was the first one I talked to you. I mean, you bought that. You just bullied me into buying. Yeah, I, I mean, it's been interesting <laughs> to see you grow as a collector too. Because like when I first met you, you you had basically Omegas and other like other regular brands. And stuff, yeah, right. Basically, stainless steel divers. You know, Tudor, Omega, right. things like that. High horology for uh, special ops. Yeah. Not a lot. Not, <laughs> I'm a, I'm a corrupting not, influence. Not, 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 yeah. not, not a lot. Bad that, person. But, but, but now, now you have, uh, you, like, after going to hang out and meet, like, uh, meet meet the, the brand, like, the folks are in Moser, and now you have a, a couple Mosers as well, too, and you're you're into the independence also, yeah, which it, is, like, it, it's just, like, an evolution. I would say, like, when you get that personal connection, 
it's gonna bond not only you with your friends, but it's gonna bond you with the company. And it you're is. gonna like to, to have that watch. It's also beyond your, your standard branding. The, the brands have to work harder to get that connection, and Moser works probably among the hardest to get that connection. One thing I would you. say the brands are so off on is there is a group out there that wants the community. They want to be involved in more events. They want to do more things together. And I try, on my own at least, to just put put guys together You're a connector. You put a lot together. Yeah, but I, I just think it's fun. Have, have you ever gone to a watch event and said, boy, that was a waste of time? <laughs> never. Like, never, ever, ever. Some are more There's, fun than oh, You others. always see something cool. Yeah. You always meet somebody interesting. At watch time in 2022, I think, or 2023, one of the two. No, it was 22. I met, I met Vaney Holter. Just, he was walking around with the watch that William Shatner wore to space. And I was just... I, like this was all of my nerdiness <laughs> coming to a point and like I, I remember standing there and I was like I wish I was wearing a tuxedo because it's just like I'm not worthy like it, <laughs> I'm standing there holding a watch that was in space with a hero of mine William Shatner with the guy who made it who is another hero of mine it's just a like a life affirming moment for an event that I spent 25 minutes at and like didn't want to go to surreal moment we were in Dubai and Philippe Dufour check this watch out. Like I hand it this watch, I think there's pictures of it. Like I give this to Philippe Dufour and he did like a little, you know, impromptu watch review on the watch, which is like crazy. Like you get these amazing moments that you just, you know, if you put yourself out there, you're, you're gonna and find. And I think, I think people underestimate how approachable these guys are. Yeah, you know, Dufour wants to talk to you about watches. He was great. The, the Melons mean, love talking to other He had the pipe, the whole thing going on. It was surreal, but uh, you know, I just, I think you just gotta jump in. I mean, I'm so happy he came to Dubai. Uh, it was awesome. I, I, I mean, it's I far, why it's came. far out of my comfort zone to, to go and did. like uh, that. It didn't make any sense, but I had a great time. And then you know, I got to meet Max Booster, who was unbelievable. And total, you can, total and hero. You, yeah. you see, like these people, like UN. I was I I didn't know that much about UN, and basically they, they charmed you when I when it, you know you met Edward, and you're like, oh, my next watch is Moser, obviously. <laughs> like, I, I can't have this story and like not go down. Not that his eyes, yeah. Yeah. Right, his eyes. right. The uh, and then you you go there and you meet you know the heroes of it, and a lot of people live up to it, and you know through watching like YouTube videos or whatever stuff like this you get different ideas. We went to a couple of the collector talks in Dubai, but the one we missed horribly is the one you sent us on video, which might be one of the best watch clips in the, you know, chats in the history of the world, the MBNF yeah, uh, the, designer. The, yeah, the MBNF Evo, um, the, the, the the double chronograph that uh, that came out. We were Steven at, uh, uh, Mc, uh, what, what's his name? I can't, McDonald's. I apologize. Is He's it Steven McDonald or? Uh, no person I ever saw more passionate, uh, heartbroken, making, like you the can see. The video is amazing. It's incredible. Yeah. Like it's, it's, it's like watching old Yeller, man. It's a tear <laughs> Uh But honestly, it's one of those things that you're like, people put their souls, their heart and soul into these watches and you get to take a piece of that. I think I'm quoting him. I think he said that in the video. This but... is somebody's expression the way that they're expressing yeah. it. And uh, that's that's really a good, uh, that's a good pin to it's put in there. It's wearable art. Like at a point, some of this mm -hmm. becomes more art. Obviously function, we can all look at our cell phones, but there's something romantic about watches. Fun, yes, you know, it's not life or death, but if you can, you know, get a watch and get some cool friends out of it, I mean, dude, what more do you want, man? Yeah, I think just the, the passion, like especially for that, that one video, the passion, that goes into like making some of these watches and you get to actually wear that on your wrist is like something that's that's really really cool um i loved in the video he was saying you know he hasn't tried it on yeah like it, like that's it, heartbreaking it, it's it would heartbreaking. Be, yeah. and and the fact that it like that is that's a designer you know that is that is something that is uh, i mean gosh that's that's also awe inspiring to me. That's, that is somebody that is so dedicated to their craft that it might be overwhelming for them to see the finished and product. And it made us want to be part of the MBNF community even more, right? Yeah. Like it's something that you see. I mean, we kind of stalked Max on a video chat one day that we got a link yeah, to. Yeah, I know that was Johnny sent us a link. Johnny, yeah. shout out if you're listening. And then we uh, we jumped on with Max, another person that's crazy accessible to his to his collectors. Like Max, Max puts himself up there. He's awesome. Uh, you know, Moser and them did the Panda crossover. Yep, they uh, should they, do more together. They should That'd do more really together. Cool. Wouldn't it be That'd crazy be really if cool. you could buy an MBNF streamliner? Boy, that wouldn't make people I hope they happy. Think of it. Yeah. yeah, if only they could <laughs> come up with that idea. That might sell. It might make people Those smile. Those collabs are so much fun. They're and you so know, cool. like the MBNF is so cool because of the end friends. And I like because Max is a titan of the industry, he absolutely is. He's been involved in the industry for a very long time now, and even outside of NBNF, and um, it's worth looking at his resume. But the fact that he wants to bridge gaps, the fact that he reaches 
across brands. The fact that he has an entry level piece for the masses, you know, hard to get as it may be, is awesome. He cares about the community. He cares about the the gaps. He wants to bridge them, and he wants to do it in a way that's sustainable and long term. Yeah, no, I mean that's that that's what I love about like his, his brand as well too. The fact that you know he made the Mad One accessible to to the masses because you know his his watches were so expensive that you know f friends and family that he you know he grew up with didn't have access to a watch like that, and he's he he's put out like a the most democratic way that he could think of to, to, to send that out to um, under a lottery system as well, too. I actually was lucky enough to uh, fail the lottery three times. <laughs> <laughs> but um, they're so cool that be because of the, those folks that did uh, went, like lose three times, they actually have a watch for them as well, too. So I do have a Mad One um, Lucky Edition coming. Uh, and so I'm like... Like my favorite cool version that? of the watch. You know, it's so so cool, and that's such a good. That I mean, that's a that's a good move. You know, it keeps people interested. It keeps people wanting to support the brand, wanting to be involved with the brand. Yeah, I know. You know, they say that. You know, we're like it seems like we're we're now a lot into like independent watches and micro brands and stuff too. And you know what he says is that you know independent watchmakers. You know, bigger brands don't need don't need you, but independent watchmakers do need you. And that, you get that personal connection with those independent watch brands, and I think that's some of the appeal of it as well, too. You're going on BNF for your next watch. I mean, it's, uh, I mean, that's kind of a girl watch right there. The, uh, the LM 101, it has all of those things. You, you meet them, and uh, I mean, how could you not want something like that? It's it's insane. It's like nothing else. The hairspring on the front, you can get transfixed watching it. But again, it's a Moser hairspring. What are we well, talking? Right under 500 watches a year, MBNF total. It's, it's special. Something special that, like you said, there's that personal connection that independents need you as much or more than than you need them. And that's there's something a, very cool about that. That's a that's such a um, that's such a powerful statement because they they absolutely do. You know, we we. We live in a world where we don't necessarily get to handle or see things and people, you know, perceive things as rarer than others. But, you know, for, for manufacturers, take, take Daybatoon, for example, um, gosh, you know, 250 to 300 watches a year. We, uh, we absolutely need to sell new watches. We absolutely need to get people involved in the brand. It's, it's a continuous thing. And there's also a touch of very, very few people working on them. So Daybatoon, for example, I, I don't know, there's 50 people that work there. That is not a lot for the product that you get, you know. And, and granted, I'm sure, you know, Moser is a small manufacturer as well in in, um, in Schaffhausen. They're, Schaffhausen is maybe a seven, eight thousand person city. It's, it's very tiny. It's very yeah. small. I got to go to the factory. It was awesome. But the big one there is IWC. Moser yep. is very small compared to IWC. But it's it's a small town, a small area of Switzerland that most people couldn't put it on a map. If and they it's, tried. it's 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 people wearing multiple hats. It's people with a similar goal in mind. It's people that are interested in pushing forward a product that they stand behind. And it's it's a small amount of people. And that's the 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 end product is larger than the group that. Puts it together, and that's really cool to me for Indies. Yeah, I have a I have a perpetual calendar that's essentially unbreakable that you can you can set whenever you want. It's forwards, a, backwards. Yeah, forwards, backwards, and a, a bracelet that's just so comfortable to wear. That's just you know something totally different. You have something unique, and it's just one of those pieces that it just kind of flies under the radar and. Only if you know you, you meet someone that really is into the watches and really knows, um, you know, you you can go about your business. But the the folks that do recognize the watch, like you know, you have a good conversation with them yep. or something. I became friends with a with a guy just at my uh, friend's wedding recently because he he noticed my streamliner, and it turns out he was a Moser owner as well too. And then we got to we went to go hang out in New York and like uh, you know hang out with the Moser guys for for a little bit. That's as well too. awesome. And like that doesn't happen without 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 the watches. I mean, like that's why this watch is really special. To the me. three of us in less than a year have done three different states. We've gone to three different states to do watch events, and we've been in New York, we've been in Jersey, we've been in Pennsylvania. You and I have gone to Dubai. We're going to you know Switzerland, and it's not going to stop. It's not like we're going to give up on watches. Yeah, no, the momentum. Pick a new hobby. We're just not that creative. The momentum of fun <laughs> in the industry is 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 strong, and and I feel like uh, the you know the further we go, the more events will happen, the more shows will happen, and. Gosh, the more friends we'll get. Yeah, man, the collaborations are always great, both from watch brands doing collaborations, but you know, I, I'd take more collaborations with other collectors. I'd, I'd like to keep you know going and seeing people that are passionate watches. You meet some quirky, uh, strange people, uh, like I guess 
all of us. Uh, but you know, <laughs> you also no, no, I'm I'm normal. You're normal, yeah. right? Yeah, very, very, very normal very, guy. I'm very normal. Very normal guy. Just don't look at his eyes. Uh, <laughs> no, it's 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 a strange hobby. Like it's not a hobby that most people are going to get, and I kind of like that. That makes me feel. Good. Yeah, it is a have a screw, few screw loose, screws loose hobby. Those like are not that. loose on your watch. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. Oh gosh, well guys. Shagor, Rob, Tim, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, this has been amazing. Your collections are outrageous and so much fun. And while weirdly similar, ultimately extremely varied. So I, I really appreciate you guys taking the time and showing. Dude, thank you so much for having us, man. Yeah, thank Absolutely you. Absolutely a pleasure, bro. Love it.